Welcome to this video podcast from the International Al Jolson Society. Starting as an audio podcast in 2007, this is a look into the works and legacy of the world's greatest entertainer, Al Jolson. An unrivaled star of stage, screen, and recording, his influences are felt even today, more than 60 years after his passing. This week's podcast is taken from the June 29, 1935 broadcast of The Shell Chateau, starring Al Jolson. This is the earliest complete radio show starring Al Jolson known to exist. The segment features Al Jolson doing some topical Yiddish-flavored humor, as well as singing a few songs. He also does a routine with boxer Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum, which one wonders if it was the inspiration for a particular scene in Mel Brooks' movie, Young Frankenstein. Let me tell you folks a surprise I had yesterday afternoon. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, nearly knocked me off my feet. I walked into the lobby of my hotel, and who do you think I found waiting there for me? Oh, you'll never guess in a million years. My father, God bless him, I rushed up to him, put my arms around him, and I said, Papa, Papa, what are you doing in Hollywood? He said, what am I doing in Hollywood? He said, doctor's orders. In Washington, I didn't feel so good, and the doctor told me I've got to have a Swedish massage. Where can I find Greta Garbo? And if you don't think I took my father around the studio to see the pretty girls, you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> my father thought of that. <laughs> well, I took him everywhere, and what a time we had. Down at San Diego Exposition, there was nothing we didn't see. We finally came to a machine that, when it's completed, will be the mechanical wonder of the age. A machine that, where you put a nickel in, out will come a white. I turned to my father and I said, think of it, Papa. What an invention. You throw in a nickel, and out comes a wife. My father said, that's an invention. <laughs> I'd like to see a machine where you put in a wife, and out should come a nickel. <laughs> and now I'd like to sing you a little song that's a sort of combination song. In fact, it's two songs in one. In June, most everybody merges. So May, I merge. March winds and April showers. Shell out, Victor. I like every month of the year, summer, winter, and fall, but love is a tenderest thing. It only blossoms in spring. March wind and April showers make way for sweet May flowers. And then comes June, a moon and you. March wind and April showers, romance will soon be ours. An outdoor paradise for two. With your lips to mine, in a thrill divine, I'll be so inspired. That I'll get you the moon for a toy balloon. March wind and April showers make way for happy hours. And May time, June time, love time, and you go April and showers. May come your way. They bring the flowers that are bloom in a May. And if it's raining, have no regret. Because it is raining, rain, you know. It's raining a violet. March wind and April showers make way for happy hours and May time, June time, love time and yours. The next 
star with Brazilian South Dakota tonight is a man I've known for a long time. He grew up in New York on the east side. And after he got tired of taking lickings from all the other kids in the block, he learned to box. And then they let him alone. But he kept on fighting till he became the light heavyweight champion of the world. And I'm sure you're all glad to see him here in Shell Chateau tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Flapsy Maxi Rosenblum. <laughs> Maxie, how did you happen to become a professional fighter? Well, Al, when I was a kid, I used to take a lot of beatings in street fights on East Side, New York, until I found out I could get paid for it. And my first manager was George Giraffe. George Giraffe. Well, you certainly had a fine fellow managing you. Tell me, Maxie, when you started fighting, didn't your family object? Sure, I used to come home with black eyes all the time. And my father would always bore me out. I remember after my first professional fight, I came home with a black eye, and my father started to go for me with a strap. I said, wait a minute, Pop. Look what I got for this black guy. And handed him a $20 bill. And when he saw that, he said, Maxie, when do you fight again? <laughs> how, many, how many professional fights have you had, Maxie? 300. Well, out of the 300, tell me, how many did you win? I won 280 out of the 300. And out of the 20 that I lost, I beat most of those fellas later and returned bounce. Oh, that's a swell record. Tell me, Maxie. What do you think of the Bear Braddock fight? Well, Al, I thought Bear was a great fighter. And naturally, I figured him to win. But if Braddock beat him, Braddock must be a better man. Oh, uh, that's fine sportsmanship, Maxie. <clears throat> By the way, didn't you fight Braddock once? Yes, Al, I fought him five years ago at Madison Square Garden. Well, uh, tell me, how did you make out? I beat him. <laughs> oh, that's swell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think you'll get another chance. <laughs> Maxie... I want to ask you something. What was the toughest fight you ever had? Well, Al, the toughest fight I ever had was with a guy called Hambo Kelly. Practically an unknown. Mm -hmm. He hit me with a right hand, and down I went. Everybody thought I was out. But if ever anybody put up a tough fight, it was me. I got up off the floor, fought that guy off his feet, and gave him the worst lacing he ever had in his life. Boy, I certainly was tough that night. Uh, you think that's tough? That's nothing along of what I did. When you talk about tough, just listen to this. You know that guy, Joe Lewis, that knocked out Canera the other night? Yes. Well, you should have heard what I told him. I told that guy plenty. I told him he was nothing but a big palooka, a big sissy. I told him I'd blacken both his eyes and bust his nose in, too. You told Joe Lewis all that? What did he say? What could he say? I hung up on him. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute, you had me thinking you were tough. But I'll never forget the time in one of my fights. My opponent was down, and I begged him to get up. Your opponent was down, you begged him to get up? Why? He was on top of me. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, Maxie. I'm the comedian here. Yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> I'm a comedian, too. <laughs> before I know it... <laughs> before I know it, you'll tell me you're a singer of songs. Say, I can sing, too. Tell Victor to play, and I'll give you an imitation of Harry Richmond. Say, listen, what have you got against Richmond? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Well, you might as well go ahead. <laughs> Richmond isn't here to defend himself. <laughs> Is that so? If you get too smart, I'll imitate you. Do me a favor, will you, Maxie? Here's five dollars. Imitate Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner, Tanner gave me ten dollars to imitate you. <laughs> well, if that's the case, you better imitate Richmond. Okay. <laughs> When you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where all in fit? You're putting on a red bangle gown, the part of a... <laughs> Hey, what's that bow for? Nothing, just a major bow special. Yeah, well, when I hear a bell, it means fight. Listen, if you don't stop singing, there'll be a fight. All right, all right. Say, well, fighting is my meat. Shell out, Victor. That's where we find every little bell go. Every Thursday evening with our bell bow. Robbing your elbow, come with me, and I'll attend that jubilee and see the fender last a bit. You're putting on the red. Good evening, friends. 
Thank you, Maxie Rosenblum. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to pay a little tribute to one of the greatest songwriters America has ever known. I've known a good many songwriters in my time, and I've sung their songs. But the man I'm talking about now is a man I've never met. His name, Stephen Foster. And the anniversary of his birthday is next Thursday. He was born July 4th, more than 100 years ago. Although he was the author of the great songs of Swanee River, Old Kentucky Home, and Old Black Joe, he died in poverty and obscurity in New York. Stephen Foster didn't live to be 40, but his song will live forever. This evening, I'd like to sing one of his greatest songs, Oh, Susanna. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm a gwine to Louisiana, my true love for the sea. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun so hot I froze to death, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I had a dream the other night when everything was still. I thought I saw Susanna a coming down the hill. The buckwheat cake was in her mouth, the tear was in her eye. Says I, I'm coming from the south, Susanna, don't you cry, oh, Susanna. Don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. I've come from Alabama with my banjo on. This entire radio program is available on the website of the International Al Jolson Society, www.jolson.org. That's J O L S O N dot O R G. Along with many other radio shows, Jolson Recordings video clips, and information about the world's greatest entertainer. Be sure to visit the site and listen for the next podcast. As Al Jolson said in the words he made famous, You ain't heard nothing yet.